near the walkway. So every morning when you get up, you'll see that Ebenezer song. It means hitherto have the Lord helped us. And brother, listen, we've got to have the help of God. There's no doubt about it. Get you a, a stone and put that stone by your walkway, and I'll tell you it'll be a real blessing. I have one in my house, and I believe you ought to have one at your house. And call it Ebenezer, because the word Ebenezer means hitherto have the Lord helped us. Now look in your Bible, and I want you to stand with me in chapter 7 of 1 Samuel. I'm going to read a few verses and get right into the message this morning. I want you to note with me, please, if you have your Bible open, uh, verse 7 and chapter 7. Verse 7 and chapter 7. The Bible says, and, and when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together at Mizpah, uh, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to tarry unto, unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. Now look this way just a moment. The Philistines were the enemies of God and the enemies of God's people. They always plagued the people of God in the Old Testament. And the, the Lord said that he could deliver them out of the hands of the Philistines, the Israelites. Now look what the Bible said in verse 9. In verse 9 it said, And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering, holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder out of uh, that day upon the Philistines, and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines, and smote them until they came under Bethar. And then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shem and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto have the Lord helped us. Now look this way, and I'm going to let you be seated, and I'm going to pray and get right into the message. They, they wanted to remember the place where God blessed them. And one of the greatest, greatest sins that you'll find among God's people is ingratitude, because we forget what the Lord's done for us. We forget the battle that God fought for us. We forget the bread that God put on our table. We forget the clothes that God puts on our back. We forget the blessings of God. That's why they said here, it's where God blessed us. And the Bible said, Samuel, the prophet of the Lord, put a stone there and said, call it Ebenezer. Now he said, they come, your little children will pass this way. They won't understand what that's about. But said they'll know that the Lord helped His people right here. And I like that, beloved. I'm glad I got an Ebenezer stone. And I want people to know that the Lord has helped me in the time of my trouble. The Lord has been my rescue when I needed to be rescued. The Lord has been my strength and my weakness. The Lord has been my victory when I've been defeated. I'm glad, thank God, I believe in the Ebenezer stone. Would you be seated all of the house and would you bow your head for a word of prayer? And in just a moment, I'm going to bring you the message of the morning. Father, we thank you for every blessing you blessed us with. We thank you for this camp meeting. Oh, God, for the jubilee of the winds of glory. We know except the Lord do it, it'll not be done. And I pray that it'll go from year to year. I thank you for every pastor that's coming in to be stirred and blessed of the preaching of the Word of God. And I thank you this morning for everyone that's gathered here to worship. Now, Lord, you know what we need. And I pray in Jesus that we'll never forget, we'll never forget where the Lord blessed us, that we'll never forget the Lord has to do the blessing. Thank you for the good singing and what a blessing it was. But Lord, you had to bless us. Thank you for the Word of God, but you've got to bless us. And I pray that we'll be able to say when we leave here, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Beloved, I want to speak to you this morning on the subject 
Uh, the Ebenezer Stone. Uh, do you have a place where God's blessed you? Uh, I'd be ashamed this morning if everybody in this house uh, would say, Preacher, I never can remember the day uh, where God ever blessed me. Uh, why, I can't remember a day when God didn't bless me. Uh, I can't remember a place when the blessings uh, of the Lord God of Israel uh, did not bless my life. Uh, and I'm glad I've got an Ebenezer Stone. Uh, it's a stone of victory. Uh, it's a stone where I pass by. And I say, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. It's a stone of thanksgiving. It's a stone of victory. And it's a stone of blessing. But let's go back in our text and I'll show you something. Israel had been in battle for a long time with the Philistines. They had their enemies in that day. But did you know that your home has enemies today? That your church has enemies today? Did you know that your life is in danger today. And there's a battle that we're fighting in these days. Somebody said, what happened in the days of the Philistines? Well, to really get the background of the seventh chapter, you've got to go to the fourth chapter. And the Bible said that Israel lost four things as they were fighting with the Philistines. The first thing they lost, they lost their shout. Now, brother, when the church loses its shout, you're sad. Why, you say, preacher, I go to church where nobody says amen. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get out of that backslidden thing. I'll get into a church, brother, where I can feel a shout from heaven come down. And you say, preacher, what happened? They lost their shout. The second thing they lost, they lost the battle. I don't have time to go into this, but they lost 34,000 men in one day. Mister, we can't afford to lose the battle. I tell you, the stakes are too high. We can't afford to lose. I'm glad I'm on the winning side. And what a blessing that is. Not only did they lose the battle and the shout, but they lost the Ark of the Covenant. And that's a sad thing because that Ark, as they carried it, proved to be the blessing that they need. I tell you, it meant God was with them. I'm glad God is with me. You say, how do you know he's inside? Praise the Lord. The Spirit of God is on the inside. My friend, when we lose the presence of God, what good is it to come to church if God doesn't meet you when you come? What good is it to try to worship when God's not in your midst? Well, I tell you, I'm so glad i got His presence. And as long as I've got His presence, I don't have to worry about a thing. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go. And praise God, it's a blessing. But a church has the presence of God Almighty in it. Let me say something about that ark. I don't have time to talk to you about it, but I used to teach and I, I taught about the ark. And it's about the size of this communion table. And it's overlaid in gold. And it had the seraphims and the cherubim on but that ark had three kings in it. And as long as they had that ark with them, brother, listen, God blessed them. One time they hid the ark on a man's farm. And you know what happened? The Bible said his name was Benadab. And the scripture said they hid that ark on his farm. And God blessed that farm. You know why? Because the Lord was on it. If I, had, if I was a farmer, I'd want God on my farm. I want to tell you, whatever you do, you ought to want the presence of God. Somebody said, Why? how did God bless that old farmer? I don't know, but I believe every chicken laid double yoked eggs. Say amen. I believe, bless God, the cream was 100%. I got me a little a bottle of milk the other day, and it said 6%. I tell you, on that farm where that ark was, I believe the cream was pure stuff. I pray God, God bless them. Not only did they lose the ark, but the fourth thing they lost, they lost the glory of God. And they said, I did depart, for the glory of God has departed out of Israel. And you leave that fourth chapter and you come over to the seventh chapter. And the Bible said they were still fighting and they were losing. And three things happened. Watch this. Three things happened. First of all, Samuel, the old prophet, he got him a lamb and said, I'll offer a sacrifice. 
Mister, when we sacrifice to the Lord, the blessings of God are coming down. Yeah. Oh, you say people that are willing to sacrifice. Brother, God is going to bless those people. I'll tell you, Sam, Samuel uh, offered a burnt sacrifice. The second thing, God fought their battle. You know how God whipped every one of those Philistines? He didn't do a thing but growl. The Bible said he thundered. And he discontented that outfit. I'm glad all God's got to do is to thunder a little bit. And he'll hear the devil to death. Say amen. Brother, he thundered. And the scripture said the Philistines fled. And they didn't have any more trouble out of them. You can't fight your battle. The church can't fight its battle. Second Samuel chapter 20. And verse 15 says, The Lord will fight your battle. The battle is the Lord's, mister. I don't have to worry about this thing. The battle is the Lord's. And I'm glad he's never lost a battle. Thank God I'm on the winning side. Brother, you're here at this church. You're on the winning side. We're on the winning side this morning. And what a blessing it was. And then the third thing happened. Old Samuel said they've gone. And you folks will forget what God's done for us. And so he goes and gets a big stone and places it up there and says, It shall be called Ebenezer, because from here on out, this place will be known as the place that God helped us. I'll tell you, every time they passed it, from there on, I imagine they want to take off the shoes and say, This is holy ground, because this is our Ebenezer. Now, if you have your pencils in the margin of your Bible, I always tell you this in every service. I'm going to tell you six stones. Let's give five. I won't have time to give you five stones that we need to erect and call them Ebenezer. When he directs a stone and reminding us of the blessings of Calvary. Oh, how easy it is to forget. Calvary, Mr. Listen to me. I never want to forget Calvary. I want to have me an Ebenezer stone. So when I pass it, it'll point to Calvary. And it'll stay there at the cross. Where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. Brother, you know why I'm blessed. I'm not blessed for Mace Jackson's sake. I'm not blessed for Baptist's sake. I'm not blessed because my name is Jackson. You know why I'm blessed. Because on a hill far away, son of all rugged cross, and I've been blessed because of Jesus and the cross and the blood. I thank God for the cross and Calvary. And it's easy to forget that. Let me show you something. We'll have to hurry. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 19, Jesus took bread and he took the cup. And he said, It's all, it's all. Take it, do this. Remember my death. He said, I want to tell you, have you there but Easter stone? And praise God, never forget that on that hill there was a sacrifice made that Jesus paid the price. Now you won't have to die. Thank God Jesus paid the price. And I won't have to die. Jesus paid the price. And I'm going to heaven by the shed blood of the Lamb. But we need an Ebenezer stone to remind us of Calvary. Let me give you two things about Calvary. And I'll have to go to the second stone. First of all, we see the depths of depravity. Now, you know what that word depravity is. Uh, that's the depths of wickedness. Uh, if you want to see wickedness this morning, uh, you don't have to go down here to Birmingham, Alabama, and down here in the brothel, or down here in the red light district, uh, or down here uh, where they sell the boobs and the honky tonk. Uh, I'll tell you, if you want to see the blackness of sin, uh, come with me to a place called Jerusalem. Uh, and outside Jerusalem, uh, on a hill far away, uh, they laid all the sin of the world on the of God. I want to tell you there, you'll see how wicked sin is. You'll see how wretched sin is. There at Calvary. Not only that, but secondly, not only will you see the depths of depravity, but you'll see the depths of the love of God. You say, God didn't love me, mister. You're foolish. Oh, you're a foolish woman. You're foolish if you think God didn't love you. Have you ever had anybody love you so much that go yonder and let them drive nails into their body and die on a cross in your place? I want to tell you, I want an Ebenezer stone. And I want to go back every once in a while and say, remind me, Lord, of what you paid for me. And the love that you had at Calvary. My 
mother loved me. But my mother never loved me like Jesus. Oh, my daddy loved me. But my daddy never loved me like Jesus loved me. And every once in a while I need to remember, oh, the love of God. You say, Brother Mays, what a blessing. I'm glad on this Sunday morning, here in this church, Mr. we need to put up a stone and say, Ebenezer, points to Calvary. And then secondly, we need to erect a stone, call the Ebenezer stone, to let us know from whence we came. I know some of you don't appreciate it, but they wasn't for the grace of God. You know where I'd be this morning, probably, with handcuffs around me. You know where I'd be? I'd be in the jailhouse, no doubt. You say, no, you was respectable. No, I wasn't respectable. Neither were you. You were lost and undone. And you're subject to do anything anybody else is doing. I want to tell you, I'm glad I can erect an Ebenezer stone to remind me of where he brought me from and where he brought me to. Glory to God. He picked me up out of nothing and put me into everything. Did you know that Jesus, the Son of God, picked you up out of nothing and put you into everything? You hear me? You say, but I'm good. No, you're not none good, God says in His Word. I'm not good and you're not good. The only good about me is Jesus. And the only good about you is Jesus. And praise the Lord. I'm glad I can go back. And you say, preacher, I, I can see from... Let, let, let me show you something. This like a bit. The Bible says in Luke chapter 15, and he left the ninety and nine in the wilderness. Went out on the bleachy mountains of sin. That's where he found me. I was lost and undone without God or his son. I was a little sheep and I said, bah! And the wolves were hellin. And listen, I was bleeding. I was dying. I had no mercy, no grace. But thank God, the great shepherd came. Woo! Praise the Lord. And he came where I was. And he reached down his hand for me. Brother, you talk about a time, children. I'm glad he reached down. When I had no strength, he was my strength. When I had no power, he was my power. When I had no life, he was my life. And he reached down and put me on his shoulders. Now that's what the Bible says. On his shoulders. I let an old boy that got up in Danville, Virginia. He had a hillbilly band. And when he got saved, he got out of the hillbilly band. Say, man. I hear preachers say, Hey, preacher! I know people that still movie stars and they're Christians. I don't believe a word of it. Bless God, I believe when you become a Christian, you become a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. But I got saved. I quit going to the honky tonks. I quit going down to the place of sin. I turned my feet under His testimonies. I've been following Jesus ever since. And brother, God's not a respecter of any person. If He did that for me, He'll do that for you, Mister. He took me out of a garbage can, put me in a banqueting table. Say Amen, right there. Oh, we need. To to see where we came from. I'll let that old boy to God. He wrote a song. Listen to what he wrote. He wrote a song. My Jesus has broad shoulders. His back is stronger than mine. Hallelujah. And he'd come sing that for me after he got saved. And the tears would spring down his cheeks. And he'd sing, My Jesus has broad shoulders. His back is stronger than mine. He can carry my burdens. I can carry him. He can carry my load. I can't carry him. But praise God, he found me. I've turned on the mountains of sin. And he put me on his shoulders and he brought me home. Let me show you something right quick. Right? Did you know that Jesus carries three things? Or will carry three things before it's over on his sh shoulders? You say in the Bible. Yes, it does. The Bible said first he put the sheep on his shoulders. Secondly, he carried the cross. They put the cross on his shoulders. Uh, Isaiah says, and a lot of folks in Alabama don't believe in this, but it's so anywhere. One day the government shall be on his shoulders. Uh, Woo! Praise God. There won't be no crooked politicians in. Uh, Jesus will be the potentate. Uh, and Jesus will be the head. Uh, and Brother Will shout it out. Uh, oh, you say, Brother me, on his shoulders, the Bible says. Isn't that blessed? I love that. Listen to me. We need to be reminded of where he came and where he found us, Mister. Out on the bleaching mountain. We need to hurriedly write this down. We need an Ebenezer stone to remind us of our vows that we make to God. Oh, are you listening? My Bible, Solomon said in the Song of Solomon, listening in the book of Ecclesiastes also. Listen to what Solomon said. 
He said it's better not to make a vow than it is to make a vow and break a vow. Now yeah. you hear me. Don't promise God when you get out of that bed you're going to church if you're not going. You're a hypocrite if you do that. You're breaking a vow. Don't promise God when you're sick if He touches you. Now listen to me. If you'll be faithful when I'm sick and the doctor says I died twice, I do not know. I only tell you what Dr. Bloomberg, the one of the best doctors in Atlanta said, he said, May Jackson, physically, and as far as life is concerned, you died twice. I said, well, I'm, I praise God. I said, I'm scripture. And he said, what? I said, I'm twice dead and plucked up with the roof. Say amen right there. Praise God. He couldn't get anything on me. And you know what that doctor said? He said, you're going to die. And I looked him in the face and I said, I've got news for you, Doc. You are too. Praise God. You're going to die too. I want you to listen to me. When I was sick, I made God a promise. I said, God, if you'll get me off of this bed, I'll preach like I've never preached. I'll tell the world as far as I can the love of Jesus and the blood and the book and the blessed hope. And I said, God, I won't go back on that promise. And by the help of God, I'm not going back on that promise. The lady said to me the other night, she said, Brother Mays, you could have gone so far if you hadn't have been a shouting Baptist preacher. I, I said, Honey, heavens, as far as I'm going, I'm getting off there. Where are you going? Amen. Praise God, I want to tell you something. How far are you going? I'm not worried about how far I'm getting off to the heaven. <laughs> Praise God, I'm sitting there. Somebody said, Hey, man. Did you make them out? Listen, I was ordained a Calvary by this church. Nineteen preachers. Nineteen preachers laid their hands on my head. The last one was one of the best. See, my pastor, as I told you now, he pastored 52 years. The first by this church. I want to tell you something. I want to help you. And he was smart. He knew Hebrew and Greek. And I, I, I don't mean anything. Somebody said, do you know Hebrew? I know a little Jew. He's Hebrew. Say amen right there. I know a little Greek. He runs a restaurant over in Atlanta, but praise God. But my pastor was a brilliant man. But there's an old mountain preacher that laid his hands on me last. And I was kneeling in that Calvary Baptist church at home, being ordained. Nineteen preachers walked by, laid their hands on my head. But the last one was crippled. And he didn't know much about Hebrew. He didn't know much about Greek. But he knew a lot about the Holy Ghost. And hell. he laid his hand on my head. And here's what he whispered. You know, they always whisper something. When they ordain you, they lay their hands on you and whisper something. And old Brother Corn, he whispered it. He said, Son, if I thought you'd ever deny old time salvation by grace through faith plus nothing minus nothing, he said, If I thought you'd ever deny the King James Version, he said, If I thought you'd ever deny the old fashioned way of worshiping God, I'd never lay my hands on you. And I turned up and I said, Brother Corn, I want to make God a promise before you lay your hands on me. I said, by the help and grace of God, I'll be true to the blood and to the ways of the cross and to the Bible. And I'll do my best to stand and hold high the blood same banner. And brother, I made that vow of God. And some hit me and went coming out from my head to my toes. You said, I don't believe that. You wasn't there. You don't know what hit me. Say amen. Hey man, you don't know what hit me. Praise God. I want to tell you something. I had me a time and I got used to it. I'm still having me a time. Oh, it's blessed, isn't it? It's blessed. But some of you promised God when you were sick. You said, God, when I get out of here, I'm going to church. You said, God, if you'll get me a job, I'll tie. I'll give. I'll... Oh, you promised God. You said, God, if you'll heal my. Let me come up thing real quickly. I want to give you one here. And boy, this, this hurts. I know it hurts. Oh, it hurts. We need an Ebenezer stone to remind us of our giving. I want you to write that down. Giving. Somebody said, oh, money, money. Now, you wait a minute. You wait a minute. If a church writes me and tells me two things, I don't go with that church. They tell me how much money they're going to give me. If they tell me how many they've got in Sunday school, I can care less. I want the Holy Ghost to be in where I go. And if the Spirit of God leads me, He'll take care of the finances. And somebody said, Hey, Brother Lee, you're preaching for money. If I was preaching for money, I wouldn't be in Alabama. I'd be in some big church up north. And I've got all kinds of invitations. I'm not preaching for money. I'm not. I'm preaching to help God's people get along this journey. I'm preaching to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. I'm preaching, brother, I can help God's people along this way. But I want to tell you something. One of the greatest curses in our churches is to give it. Give it. Now listen to what Jesus 
said in Acts chapter 20 and verse 25 or so, it said, and Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than receive. And I want to tell you, you'll never outgive God to save your life. And you say, Brother Mays, what about this giving? Are you listening, brother? We sin because we don't give what we should. I'll tell you, we don't do what we should. I'm going to show you something in just a minute. I want you to hold on. I want you to hold on. I preached over at Maryville, Tennessee. And by the way, this goes on a big station up there. It don't make any difference. And I, I noticed your man always ushered. He took up offering. He's there every year. I went to that church. And one year he wasn't there. And I said to the preacher up on the platform just before he introduced me. I said, where's my friend? He said, shh, don't say nothing. I said, what's the secret about it? He said, don't say nothing. I'll tell you after service. And so after service, I back changed in my shirt putting on a dry shirt. And you know what he did? He came to him and he said, Brother Mace, we caught him taking money out of the collection plate. He said he lost his job and he'd come take up the offering. He did. He'd take money out of it. And he said, finally, I had to go to him and I asked him and I confronted him, you, are you taking money out of the church offering plans? He said, yes, sir. But he said, I want to ask you something, preacher. And don't you lie. And the preacher said, I'll not lie. He said, which is worse for me to take it out? after somebody puts it in or for somebody to come to church and not put it in. said, both of us are robbing and both of us are stealing. And he, the preacher said, I had to stand there amazed and couldn't open my mouth. He said, we've got people every Sunday in our churches that are God robbers. And brother, God can't bless a church and a people that are God robbers. Listen to me. Oh, you say, but that's about Malachi. Let me show you something. God said, if you don't tithe, he told those Israelites, I'll do three things. He said, first of all, I'll close up heaven. I'll not open the windows of heaven if you rob me of the tithe and offering. And boy, I want the windows of heaven open on me. Oh, praise God. Number two, he said, there'll be no bread on the table. Sinners come to our Baptist churches and there's no bread on the table, Mr. Because God's people are robbing God. Oh, he said, hardly I'll curse you with a curse. I want to show you something. I'd rather have 90 cents in my pocket and know that I paid a dime. Uh, listen to me. As time and mister, that's 10% of everything you make. Are you listening to me? It's 10% of everything you make. But I'd rather have 90 cents in my pocket with the blessing of God on it than have a dollar in my pocket with the curse of God on me. Amen. You know I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me. Listen to me. My mother died. She had a beautiful home. Beautiful home. Rock home. Circle, circle, drop, band, you had everything. <clears throat> but I got a brother, just one brother. Before she died, I went to her and I said, now, I said, Mama, I don't want to see you and Daddy have. I don't want to see you. I said, I want you to give it to my brother. He's a teacher and I'm a preacher. I said, teachers, they needed more preachers. <laughs> Amen. I said, give it to Fred. And I said, there are two things I want of yours. I said, one of them's older than I am. Now, you listen, I'm going to help you this morning. And she said, what is it? I said, there's a little tithe in God. That you and Daddy, and God, when y'all got married, a year before I was ever born, y'all started tithing. And I said, you put that money in that jar or that little, that little cup every Sunday, and you took it to church. Every Sunday when Daddy got paid, he said, Lillian, take that tithe out. We're going to put it. We didn't have envelopes in. You better get some envelopes. The IRS get after you. Wish you had envelopes. Amen. Amen. Brother, you better get some things. Somebody said, that's old-fashioned. Are you? Well, that's all right. That IRS gets after you. You think it's new. You better have some proof. They won't listen you know what my daddy did? Every Saturday, brother, that tithe money went in that little jar, that little cup. And that cup, listen, is mine today. I'm 62 years old. That cup's 63. And I can look at it and get blessed. Because I know that my mother and dad didn't rob God. And back in those days, you hear me? If a preacher say anything about tithing, he was preaching the law. But if God will bless those Israelites for tithing, He'll bless me for tithing. Say amen. And brother, He'll bless you for tithing. I tell you, He'll bless your heart. Now I said the second thing, Mother. Not only I want your tithing jar, I said,
said, I want your Bible. And I got her Bible. And every once in a while, I'll open it and I'll see where a tear fell. And I'll bless it and I'll say, glory to God, it bless my mother right here. Oh, you can't bear the name. Listen to me. The secret of our home was that we believed in giving God promises. And Mr. God will get those ties one way or the other. Say, I used to have an old deacon in my church and he had to go to the hospital and he's having his appendix taken out and I was up there and a man said, what's Brother Dowie doing in here? I said, they're taking his ties out. Say amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. He's taking his ties out. Oh, you say, Brother Mays, what about that giving business? I want to tell you something, mister. God's going to hold you responsible. I'm going to give you something today. I want to give you something. I know a church up in, up in Michigan. I go there every year. Detroit. Listen to me. You know what they do? They got a sign there that says, Try tithing for six months. And if God doesn't bless you, we'll give you a tithe back. And I said to the pastor, I said to Brother Jack, or I said to his name, he's the doctor. I said to him, I said, Listen, Doc. I said, If you had to give anybody's money back, he said, Not a nickel. He said, Everybody's tithe is blessed of the Lord. But he said, If we ever find anybody in this Touch the ties and God doesn't bless them. We'll give them their money back. We won't ask any questions. We'll, the secretary of the church will write a check of the place. And we'll not argue. But said, we haven't had to give a nickel back. And it's been up there 15 years, that sign. And he said, my church gives more than you. The church in Michigan. He said, because we believe what God said to do. And brother, I believe what God said to do. Let me give you one thing about, about this giving. The Bible said in Mark chapter 12, the Scripture said, listen very quickly, the Bible said there's a little woman who came and had two mice. That's all she had. Two mice. And she came and gave the two mice. The rich gave of their abundance. Thank God they wouldn't stay you. They gave. The rich gave. We're always criticizing the rich, but you hear me, they gave. But there's a little widow that had two mice. Oh, a mice a fourth of a penny. And two fourths of a half. She gave a, gave a half a penny. And Jesus rejoiced because she gave a half a penny. He, he said, whithersoever, oh, this gospel shall be preached. They don't know about these things. Let me say to you, as sure as you're in this house, and my name is Mason, so I want you to know we need an Ebony Stone to remind us of our giving. Our giving. Now, here's what I say. We need an Ebony Stone to remind us of the blessings of God every day. This is what the book says. And every morning, every morning, His compassions are new. And every morning, God blesses you. Every morning you get out of that bed. Every morning you go to work. Listen to me. You ought to lift up your hands toward heaven and say, Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. I want to tell you, it's easy to forget the blessings of God. It's easy to forget the blessings. Boy, I, I don't forget the blessings of God. You've never heard me say this. You never heard me. Boy, it gags me to preach or give poor man. It gags me. God's going to take care of everybody. That's His. Did you know that? Amen. God's going to take care of you. He may have knocked a on some of you, but He'll take care of you. Say amen right now. Brother, God's going to take care of you. But I want you to know this, mister. I've been blessed. Blessed the Father. But just this week, I, I was up for Walters with me. My undertaker. My undertaker said, May, you tell God that when you die, she can come in and pick out the most beautiful casket I've got. And said, I'll bear you free. I told my wife, she said, Pray for it. I said, Quit shouting on my dying. I ain't dying. Dying yet, say amen. Amen. You say, Preacher, I never thought. Now, people give me everything. I'm not kidding you, boy. It's wonderful how God's blessed. But listen, I don't want to forget where it comes from. Oh, you know, I could easily get to a place where I'd forget. Now I want an Ebenezer stone to say, Lord, I want to thank you for your blessings on me. Now write this scripture down. Write this down for taking notes there. And then I'll close. I tell this story. Listen to what the Bible said. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 15. Listen to what the Bible said. Lest you forget. Lest you forget the God that brought you out of Egypt. That was what he said. And he said, Lest you forget. Three things. First, you're living in houses you didn't build. I don't know what you do, J.D. You can sell no houses. They build them before they got there. Say amen. Amen. Secondly, the Bible said you're eating, eating vineyards you didn't plant. 
And thirdly, God said, you're drinking from wells that you didn't get. And he said, lest you forget the blessings of God. Boy, I'm living. I'm living and enjoying the blessings of God. Hey, it is to forget where you came from. Hey, it is for you to forget what God's done. I ought to put you up in Ebenezer. And say, hither to have the Lord help me. Let me tell you a little story. I like this. The boy standing on the street. He had you standing on the street. He's ragged. He said, Paper, mister. Paper. Paper, mister. The man walked by and said, Hey, buddy, you're cold. It's a November day and it's real cold. He said, Yeah, pretty cold. He said, Won't you go home and take those papers? He said, Will you go home if I buy all your papers, little boy? The little boy took that ragged sleeve and wiped the tear out and said, Mister, I ain't got a home. I have to sleep where I can. And the man looked at him and said, Would you like a warm place to sleep tonight and some warm food? The little boy said, I don't have no money. I sell papers and I sleep. I can and I eat out of garbage cans most of the time. And the man said, If you'll go down to that big house right that night and knock on the door and say one thing after, after everything the man says, say just one thing. He said, You'll be taken care of. Sir. And the little boy said, What should I say? He said, say, John 3.16. That's what he got to say. The boy went down, knocked on the door. Nice man came to the door in a big house and said, Hello there, Sonny, how are you? The little boy said, John 3.16. Oh, he said, come in. Took that little boy inside. The little boy was ragged. He said, are you hungry? The little boy said, John 3.16. He said, come on. He fed him a good, warm meal. And while the man was walking away, the little boy looked down at that warm food and he said, I don't know what John 360 is, but Lord, I want to thank you for it. Lord, I don't know what it's for, but Lord, it'll give you food when you're hungry. He'll give you a roof over your head. And a man came back and said, Son, would you like a warm bath? And he said, John 360. And the man took him in and gave him a warm bath. When he turned, the man will get some tiles. The little boy looked up and said, Lord, I don't know what John 3.16 is, but he'll give you warm food when you're hungry. Whoa! It'll put clothes on your back. It'll give you a warm bath. And the man came in and said, Son, would you like a nice bed to sleep in tonight? He said, John 3.16. The little boy went in and crawled into the covers of a warm bed. After a while, the little boy was lying there and the tears streaming down his cheeks. And he said, I don't know what John 3.16 is, but it'll give you food when you're hungry. It'll give you clothes when you're naked. It'll give you a bed when you're tired. And about that time, outside the door, that man said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, Son, that's what John 3.16 is. That little boy fell out of his bed and 